Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Welcome to joining us. I know you have come to China for many times, but is this your first time came to Chengdu? How did you feel? No, I, I've been to Chengdu for several times. I like Chengdu. Do you like spicy food? No, nope. maybe skewer. No, nope, I do not like spicy food, but <laughs> I like too spicy, right? <laughs> I like I like the tea houses, and I like it's a very very relaxed. It's a different. It's a very different city. I found a very interesting point. In the past century, people thought that watching documentaries was quite niche. But in recent years, more and more people have fallen in love with watching documentaries. So, how do you think these audiences have been cultivated? In another word, why this change has occurred? Well, there are there are several reasons why documentaries are becoming more popular,、um, and some of them are to do with the audience, and some of them are to do with the the the.、Um, The people who finance the documentaries, because documentaries are much cheaper than traditional dramas, and they can get an audience. If the subject is interesting, people are interested. When you see a documentary, you're you're kind of doing a deep dive into a into a world that you will otherwise never see, that you cannot visit, that you cannot experience, except in a documentary film. Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm I'm here in Chengdu as a judge at the、uh, at the Golden Panda Awards, and、um, it's very different when we're watching a Chinese film and when we're watching a Western film. They are made very differently. They are conceived very differently. And、um, so the answer to that is yes. But the best films, I can't tell you what are going to win. But I can tell you that the best films share two or three qualities in common, which is that they are not just emotional, they're not just statistical, they're not、uh, just about facts and figures. The best films, whether they are for China or whether they for Western audiences, have to be about people, and have to be、um, very. They have to reveal a lot. Emotionally, just what you said before. I'm so curious about that. How to tell China stories well in a world voice and touch audiences, including domestically and internationally. Well, you know, there is no, there's no、um, secret recipe to telling Chinese stories. I think the the the, the fundamental bu- building block of a good storyteller is being able to tell、uh, the story from a position of trust. So if I want to put you in one of my films, we really need to know you. I need to know you. You need to know who I am. You need to be able to trust that if you tell me a secret about your relationship with your parents, or your family, or your your boss, or whatever, that I'm not going to betray that secret. So the 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 real bridge is to build trust. The the films that are winning the festival right now are the films that are engaging and interesting, and you want. You want to know more about the people. You want、them. to watch it all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. I know you have a new documentary this year called China in My Lens. How do you feel about recording China from your personal perspective? I mean, I, I've been to China back in the 80s when most of the people in this room were not even born. I, I've seen the the journey that China has taken over the last, you know, almost 50 years. It's something that China should be proud of. Now. 1.4 people eat every day. Nobody goes hungry. Everyone gets educated. Everyone has a place to live. Shao Kang has meant that poverty alleviation has lifted over 100 million people out of poverty. I, I have huge admiration for what China has achieved. 